So yesterday's topo study was on a sphere, but I wanted to do something a little bit smaller and a little bit more contained for just kind of demonstrating uh, certain topological solutions for certain problems. So to start this out, I'm just going to grab this edge and we're just going to bevel it. So we're just uh, jumping into it without any further ado. So we have a pretty tight density of bevels of uh, edges here. And so I'll jump into box cutter as well. And we will just give it just amount, just the right amount of segments to avoid fastening. You can see the fastening going away as I'm rolling the wheel. In fact, we're at 12 segments now. So that's about where we want it. And so we have applied this and this is the result we get. So we, the first reaction I would have to this is, can I fix it with weld? We can get in and maybe scroll weld a little bit and weld will get us part of the way there. The next question is, can I use box cutters, uh, knife box to quarantine such an area in order to mitigate the shading failures from getting outside of it? And we see that this is about as far as it's going to let us go unless we want to uh, jump our weld up to unreasonable numbers. And in this case, um, weld is not helping us as much as um, I'd like. In fact, all these areas where it's being moved are things that just irk me. I would rather not have weld and just discuss how we would solve this. So um, for the sake of this example, I will mirror to the other side. So that way we can see what, what a treated side looks like and an untreated side looks like. And we'll just press Control A, Visual Geometry to Mesh, and let's get in here. So playing off of yesterday's example, we just want to make sure all the edges that are coming out of here have a particular flow to them. In fact, um, there's a lot of choices that have to be made in such a situation. For example, I'm going to subdivide and create an edge there. And we'll subdivide and create a vert here as well. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say edge. And we'll just bring this around so that we can just kind of get something in this area to begin handing things off. So these two things can experience what's called a handoff, where it's hard to choose which one I want to skew as far as the geometry goes. So sometimes I'll actually opt to just create something redirectional internally like I'm doing here. For this one, we have a very hard choice. I'm going to choose to just hand that one off. Uh, we'll do the same thing here. Just hand these off. In fact, for this one, it's more of a um, power struggle. So we'll just pass that one all the way up here. And, you know, even that isn't the most optimal solution. I mean, once you really get in here and you're looking at the geometry, that's when you really want the perfection. And so sometimes I get a little obsessive and will think about how I can get this result um, in the most efficient way. And I'll just keep worrying about efficiency over everything else. So for the purposes of making this a time constraint exercise as well, we will just, you know, cut the discussion short and just get to work fixing things. So we're offsetting our ends to be handled externally for this, even though some of these will need to be resolved in their own right in order to get the type of shading that we desire. With knife, um, I like trying to use knife consecutively, but sometimes I find after a point, it is an operation I have to end and begin anew in order to get the results that I want. So this edge is uh, kind of important. It holds the perimeter in the front as far as the form goes, but this one on the inside, we can indeed terminate. So we see what we're getting here. I'll press Alt X and this time we'll actually use symmetry to just mirror this to the other side and we'll just dissolve these additional edges just to keep everything perfectly symmetrical. And if we look at the other side, we have basically an auto solution, just whatever geometry and here we are with slightly more optimal shading. In fact, if we were to grab this whole region and make sure that we have the whole region, we want to at least select past the mirror junction. So we'll select this, hold control, select to here, and we'll just press control B in order to begin beveling inwards. And we see that most areas were able to take this quite well. We can see that down here, it didn't take it very well. And we can see up here that my redirect wasn't taken very well. So in light of um, being more controlling with our geometry, I'm just going to add this to a vertex group so I don't have to select it again. 
but we will go ahead and just create a additional area to connect there. And then of course we will mirror it to the other side. And I'll just select this, Shift G, usually vertex groups there, but if I'm in vert mode, Shift G, vertex group, and I can reselect the vertex group I just had. So now we'll bevel it again. We can see that edge really working its way over. Um, but let's check the other side because we are working on one side and just mirroring it to the other. So we see that with each of these wayward edges that they require a small amount of guidance. And by doing just a little bit of work today, we can prevent a little bit of grief tomorrow. But understanding the bevel and why it gives you the results that it does is crucial towards uh, finding success within Blender itself. Because assuming that everything's automatic and it's just going to work great um, is, is not, not the smartest way to approach things. A uh, common thing I always say is, hey, you know, this is open source software after all. So um, there are going to always be some limitations. But every time I work, I see those limitations less and more and more. So instead of even dealing with the geometry to make it take this, we can actually just merge this stuff in and get it nice and clean and then just mirror to the other side. And we see that now we have something much cleaner and much nicer. In fact, we can put just a loop here, put one here, and just start handing this stuff off to the next section. And then we can start relieving some of that tension because this area pretty much has it secure. And what I mean by that is we can select this stuff, just kind of slide it down, slide this in, and really start worrying about our loop formation surrounding this area. Like normally, I just deal with enough to get the shading just right. However, sometimes I also like to experiment with getting um, nice topology in an area. So here I am attempting to create a flow that could flow all the way up and go around to the back. So I just wanted to at least talk about uh, just kind of creating edge flows because we can create edge flows all the way throughout this thing if needed. But really in areas of crucial curvature and certain operations, that's where you would really want it. So you see how this area looks with just a few adjustments versus the previous area, which I would still have just left be. Um, sometimes I can get a little obsessive with topology, but I always just um, kind of time box myself to um, ensure that I'm only giving it as much time as is needed for the per particular result. In fact, when you're looking at this as a whole, there will be so much going on with it that you won't even be looking at this area. So we look at this side, this side looks good. We look at this side, side did not come out so good. And we could get in and clean this up manually as well to just make an example of it. But I just want to talk about just topological cleanup on top of the surface. In this case, I don't even feel the need to shrink wrap, but I could slap a weight at normal just to get the shading absolutely right. And I just want to say that this one is definitely a much more uh, challenging example than the previous one. With the sphere, um, you know, the bigger that your sphere is and the smaller the area that you're working in, um, the smaller that your face is going to be. So to show this example, we will just turn something into a simple sphere cast. And if we, you know, convert this to mesh and we take off basically these, this area, um, the amount of curvature to flat happening here with the amount that we have to deal with is a little bit smaller when compared to a double bevel situation here which is a very common modeling issue that I see users run into from time to time. In fact, if we wanted to just really perfect this, I will duplicate it and just mirror it to the other side. And we can see that both sides now look fairly good. I can see a little bit of shading happening here, but we're definitely in a much better place than we were before. If we wanted to be just really OCD with shading, we can get in there and turn even that little corner into a topological study. But in terms of wrapping this up, we can just control click bevel, and just add a bevel and just roll it in there and get a very nice bevel actually connecting these two shapes just based on us getting in there and just doing a little bit of work for helping things flow together smoothly. And then of course, um, some of these other areas in the back will also possibly get a little unruly um, with their geometry getting more sparse as you try to get um, more round with your topological choices. So in, in, whenever those sort of things come up, that is where shrink wrap may want to play a role. In fact, if I wanted to shrink wrap this object, I could just shift click curve extract to make it into a plate. However, I wasn't 
I didn't have the object selected when I was in edit mode. So now that it is selected, I can just shift click and now I'm actually getting the result that I want. And we see that mouse wrap is one of those things that we need on the hop side to reduce that limit. But we'll just go into control tilde helper, extrude it across, and we'll just go under our settings for shade wire. And let's just get it to be absolutely fitting, which this shape is two. And for this shape, let's also uh, convert it to subdivision. We'll take it in edit mode and you see this shape. This shape is so simple and there's no topology to support it. So if I convert it into sub D, we're gonna get that. However, with the power of sharpening, um, apply crease and apply seam or just mainly apply crease, we sharpen it and we see that now it's able to hold the form. But because the shape is still in a modifier generative state, we actually have to make these changes on the actual base form. And we see that it almost took all the levels of sub D. So we'll need to just apply solidify and then run sharpen. And now we have a smoother, much more uh, snap worthy shape. In fact, we can remove this bevel. We don't need it for what we're about to do. And so let's just take the easy way out. We'll sharpen it, which will give us these isolated areas that we can then, um, let's see, I'll select this. I'll select the main object and select the object I want to shrink to. And under Q and mesh tools, we will choose shrink to. And so now that we've shrank to, we can actually make this a vertex group and give this the ability to use only the vertex group. And now we've actually projected this on nicely. In fact, if I press control zero, we're back to a, num um, a level of zero, just kind of showing us what it would look like if um, we didn't do any sub D modifications to it. However, as I press control one, two, and three, we can see it actually jump up into levels, just kind of giving us a little bit better of an example. In fact, I can almost see the topo becoming a little bit questionable here, which is just one of those things that you just have to question if you want to go through all of that in order to perfect. And for me, the answer is always yes. The answer is yes, I wanna know how I can get it absolutely perfect. In fact, we take our matte cap and we jump it up to the car paint and we see that there's just a little bit of breakage in these areas where we slid things around. So we probably just wanna slide things, just get things a little bit smoother. We're gonna have to um, get a little bit questionable with our topology here in order to make sure it has enough curvature to handle this double curve situation. Of course, me being uh, weird, I always try to turn triangles into quads on site whenever I can, just because it's just nice to see. And so if we continue looking at this, we're just trying to figure out where exactly things are going wrong. So it could be that we have a form that's going in this shape and we have topology attempting to redirect things to be something a little more curved. So the amount of play that we're giving this is really just delaying the inevitable, which is inevitable shading issues that will come from creating these shapes in the first place. So to wrap this up and figure out how we can actually solve this. In fact, it's like, um, do we need to solve this? I mean, the goal is to get it to be able to take a bevel. To get absolutely perfect shading, I would then need to begin talking about data transferring and I'm just not trying to get into that topic. Um, it's just not a workflow I particularly want to um, be responsible for bringing about in, in the apocalypse. Um, there's just so much to it that I feel that um, users need to understand. And for people coming just in raw off the streets to begin doing such things might be uh, a dangerous proposition. In fact, we put the shrink wrap at the very first, and we actually get a much nicer result here. In fact, we shrink wrap and we just toggle it off and on. We can see the shading just kind of breaking in those areas. So we were able to get it fairly nice. In fact, we look at the car paint just one more time and we see that it's able to roll across that surface. However, like I always say with these sort of things, these topological examples are just a small part of something that would be in the full assembly of an entire model. So um, there comes a level of shading adherence that you know at some point I have to ask myself, is it just right? Is this gonna work? Is what I'm seeing right there? What is that? 
And we could probably fix that by just grabbing this edge and grabbing this edge and just marking sharp. And now we have that hard transition going between. So that kind of reminds me of my 2.79 days where I would actually put lines in between in order to just keep things sharp and going across transitionally. In fact, we look at the back where we didn't do it. And it's only at just certain angles that we would see just even these flatty faces fall apart. And so just to show it again, we'll just select both of these, mark sharp, and now we're able to at least hack our way through this and just continue on working on this model. So with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.